Hello and welcome back, I'm Lincoln, and today I'm going to show you how to make lightning and nomad sculpt. It's pretty easy, we have to go into the post-processing menu and the materials menu to make this happen. Stick around to the end, I'm going to show you how to avoid some of the lighting and the pitfalls for making the materials menu. Alright, let's dive in. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is add a cube to the scene. Now with this, we're going to go ahead and turn solo on. It just makes it so much easier to deal with so you don't have to look at all these other objects in the scene. And we also need to go into the scene menu and pull this box out. So it will automatically kind of put it in there sometimes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and validate it. And I'm going to bring the mesh up to around 500. You want it fairly smooth. You don't want it real choppy. Now, the main brush I use for this is the layer. I'm going to move it right up next to the move brush because those are the two brushes we're going to use for this. Turn off symmetry. And we'll just, woo, that was way too big. So we'll come bring it way down. And that's about right. Maybe a little smaller. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So just kind of draw something on here. And you don't have to worry about it being perfect right at this second because we can move this around in just a moment and I'll just do one for this demonstration and you can add several different ones and clone and whatever you want to do now when you use the layer brush you'll see that the the side there has layers on top of the layer as you draw over them so we'll just use the trim brush and just cut those off with the rectangle and make sure fill holes is on trim that off and then we're going to trim all of this off just make sure you're snapped to a view and that's it you really don't have to do any smoothing on this if you don't want to you can go ahead and remesh this if you want which is fine and that's it that's basically all we have to do for this now the next thing you want to do is I would go ahead and just paint it. it makes it pretty easy so you can paint and it you want to make sure roughness and metalness is off and we'll bring this all the way up to the corner so you can see how this works first because it's that's the brightest it's going to be we'll come up to the materials menu and click on additive now you want to make sure that the opacity is all the way up and the reflectance is all the way up and that's all we have to do in this menu right now. Now, it doesn't look like anything's happening. Let's turn off solo so we have this in the scene. And let's just quickly place it. There we go. And that's, that's good enough for now. Okay, so to make this actually glow, we're gonna go into the post-processing menu Click on post process and the main effect for this is the bloom and you can see automatically you have a have a nice bright color now to get this to go to a different color and you can see the effect this is going to have is all through here if you get all the way down to the bottom you'll see it goes clear not there's not much glow to it so really you're kind of working on this corner and i prefer the square for this the square color picker rather than the the disc so somewhere we'll go with that paint all and now you have a nice purple lightning go back into post process and you're going to change the intensity and the radius all of these are going to change a little bit of what you have going on so let's go into the background and we'll turn on a color because I have a nice dark color in here. All right. Now, something to understand is this is a change in material, so there's no actual real lighting. So you're not going to cast, as you can see, you're not going to cast any color on here like you think. So what we're going to do is put a light in here. The point light, if we go in here, I have a backdrop in the scene. So if you put a backdrop in, if we add a point light, we'll add a point. Now, if you do that, you can see no matter what you do, if we click on the backdrop and change the paint, and we'll go down to black. And depending, you know, the more rough you get, the brighter it's going to glow. So that probably is not what you want. 
the metalness is going to make a difference. You can bring it down, but you're always going to have that point in the background. So we're just going to leave that as it is. I'll bring the metalness up and the roughness down and just paint all. So it's better, but if you want this, you can see this down here is going to be an issue. It just depends on what you have set up. Most of the time, I don't use that one, so we'll just delete that one, and we're going to add a spotlight. This is the better option. And we'll come up over here, and this is one of the last things we want to touch on is the issue with the brightness of this. When you have this up here, we can even put it right here. We'll just put it right on the lightning, and you bring the intensity up. The problem you see right there starts to show up once you bring your intensity up and this is exaggerated so you can kind of see what's going on but you can see the lightning has a shadow so to get rid of that all we have to do is go to the scene menu go to our box the lightning and change the material to cast shadows turn it off and now we're set so the last thing you want to do is come in and use the move tool we're going to go up the fall off menu go to the catmull rom and now this is where it makes it so much easier to make your blocky lightning effects and just make sure you've double tapped on these to make them dark and if we can kind of move these around a little bit get a couple more now when you go to move you're going to have you're instantly going to go this from kind of the round neon look to a move. So we'll bring this up and it'll get really blocky really quick. And you can see here, oops, let's go to solo. And if it's moving around like that, just push and hold and lock it. And now you can get this all choppy. Turn off solo, unlock it, and now we can come in and use the move tool on a bigger setting and start moving this a lot more. And that looks really good. And then it's just a matter of going in and fine tuning everything. So once you've done the bloom, you can bring the bloom down because you have the bright light. Now, you'll notice you have kind of an artifact effect depending on how much bloom you have. So come up here and increase your sampling and that'll smooth that out for you and get rid of that, that pixelation looking. You, you can go to the tone mapping, you can change your exposure. And it, this is where all your fine tuning is. Bring this down a little bit. You can increase the saturation, contrast, so it's kind of like your last last little tone. And then here, you know, this is normal. You can reset, and now you can change your curves a little bit and change which ones you want to change. And you can bring highlights in, change it different colors if you like. So, so many options for this. Now, the last thing is on here, you can also change the paint on this and you can see that I have it in the full metalness with no roughness because if you, generally if you change this up to, and it doesn't show the live preview on this as well, but you can see if that's the roughness will sometimes make a difference on that. So, however you want that to be. All right, I hope you guys learned something. This one's really fun. It's an easy technique to do and it doesn't take much as you can see. It's mostly the materials menu and the post processing that makes all this work. You can fine tune this any way you want. Do several different colors on the lightning and really change it up. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. All right. Thanks.